say the best meals are, are the ones that are simplistic to make only because you're featuring the ingredient and you want your your guests to recognize what they're eating. When it's complex and unrecognizable, people are unsure whether they like the food or not. And I'm not making food for people to be unsure. I want them to know exactly what they're eating and feel comfortable and loved when they eat it. Good food uh, begins with good ingredients. Uh, if you start with fresh, good ingredients and the passion behind treating that ingredients with respect, that's where good food starts. My name is Luis Alberto Carreño. I'm born and raised in El Paso, Texas. I'm a first generation American uh, Mexican from my family. Uh, both my parents are from Mexico. I went to culinary arts for 15 months at Le Cordon Bleu, uh, Texas Culinary, Austin. I grew up kind of in a musical food family. Um, my grandfather passed away very young, when I was very young. So just kind of memories of him being a part of the food industry kind of just struck, struck with me and stuck with me. And uh, later kind of led to my interest in, um, in food, which I was also uh, influenced heavily by this show called Great Chefs of the World back in the late 80s, early 90s. And I was young and I didn't understand it, but things they were creating was just amazing. And I at that moment, I didn't know I was going to be a chef, but I knew that I wanted to learn how to cook like that. In 2008 hit, and a lot of restaurants started closing in Austin, and that led to my lucky appearance in Vegas working for Thomas Keller at that time. So I was able to move from Austin to Las Vegas uh, within a matter of a month. My name is uh, Frank Torres. I'm born and raised here in El Paso. Uh, married, have two great kids. And this isn't the first time I've had his cooking. I've had it many times, absolutely delicious. Um, I would, of course, love to learn a lot more. Here they are, are my, my famous blackened chicken tacos with the avocado mango relish and a cilantro salad. Grab a taco, buddy. You ready? Grab it. Grab it and bite into it. Bite into it. Hey, you want some chicken? Yeah, taste the pollito. You just want chicken? Here you go, buddy. The chicken looks pretty simple to make. It's very simple, yeah. I mean, I, all I did was break it off the carcass, put blackening season on it, and cooked it. That's all I did. <laughs> The state of American cuisine at the moment is still in its birthing process. Um, it's still heavily influenced by European and, and other countries, but I mean, that's what American food is anyways. It's, we're, a, we're a migrant country, so all of that food comes from somewhere else. But I think our spin on it sometimes is, is ridiculous. Uh, for example, hamburgers and hot dogs are American food and American cheese. It's all processed. It's ridiculous. But then you have chefs out there that are responding to true American heirloom ingredients as far as vegetables and herbs and spices. And, and they're bringing back true American cuisine by using true American native uh, ingredients.
farmer's market started, uh, I think about uh, 12, 13 years ago, and we did that for the same reason, was to get farm uh, fresh local foods into um, dining rooms in the area, into um, homes in the area, and to help the farmers have an outlet and begin to grow again. The restaurant has always been on a trajectory of local food, and it's been on a trajectory of, of trying to create a food community within the city of El Paso and the region, in the southwest region. The desert is a great place to have winter um, crops growing because we've got a pretty mild um, winter season. Right. People can row cover, people can greenhouse grow, and we get a lot of good um, lettuces, a lot of the good leafy greens, gourds. and gourds, and all your root vegetables that obviously go in during the winter yeah, yeah. months. So this, uh, the market's a, a, it's been um, pretty successful in that way that we uh, we can keep it now. It's a year-round market. We're in year. This will be the third year of our year-round market, and uh, it's been successful that way. That's good. The problem with the food culture in the United States, in my opinion, is that chefs don't control the dialogue. And to me, it's important that chefs control the dialogue because chefs understand that food that comes out of an organic soil um, is as good as it's going to be. They make it taste better, they present it better, but it's coming out of a natural soil. I'd like to try whatever you're willing to let me try. I'll tell you what, I know what you're going to like. It's easy, huh? Very easy. And this is the strawberry? No, that's not the strawberry. That was good. Then one that all my men buy, only the men buy this one. Is that an apple? No, it's banana caramel. I might be the only man that's probably not going to buy this. Oh, really? I'm not a big banana fan. Try it. That was good. Okay, you're, you're a That's berry. good. You're a berry fan. I'm a berry guy, though. Okay, then. Yeah. I'm a jar guy, though. I might not bring the jar back. A lot of people don't. <laughs> I use them, I use them. What are you in, my love? Okay, that's $7, and like I said, you bring the jar back, you keep the dollar back. You can taste whatever, but what's left is the a baguette and the cranberry walnut. Okay. Here's the cranberry walnut. Here, here, let me, let me do this. I'm sorry. No, no worries. I'm not shy. Here, I do uh, cooking classes, catering's, um, any kind of invented involved food. Good, good. I'm involved. Well, well, this is Calavera Bread Company, bro. I hope you guys like the bread. He's, he's an artisan, good. artisan baker. Are you guys from El Paso or New Mexico? Yeah, no, uh, El Paso, El Paso. There you go. Tenemos chile rostizado de Nuevo México. Recién calientito, recién rostizado. Okay. Tenemos bistras. Cinco dólares. Cinco, okay. Acá hay un bolsa y citra y chile ancho. El área es verde. El verde no secado. Ancho no. No, puro jalapeño, güey. No, no, no. 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 No, no
I'm just gonna make my way this way and then we'll end up here. As simple as this sounds, uh, my Mexican corn, uh, my Mexican roasted corn, uh, it's simple. It's a simple recipe. Just roasted corn, uh, lime mayonnaise, uh, ancho chile, valentina hot sauce, uh, cotija, cheese, and cilantro. But the simplicity of those three ingredients, just it's nostalgic for me, I guess. And that's why it's my favorite dish. And I'm, I like to share it with other people, especially of Hispanic and Mexican culture, because it reminds me of going to like La Feria or, or going to my grandma's house and, and walking with them down the street to the taqueria and then stopping by and getting a, a cup of elote and stuff like that. So it's very nostalgic to me. And that would, I would say, and I guess a lot of Austinites would agree that uh, the Mexican street corn that I produced is probably my best dish. My, like I said, my cooking classes, I try to teach just the respect, ethic, and manners of food and to be uh, efficient for yourself and how to cook properly and, and not be scared to approach uh, a professional look on cooking at home because it can be done at home, absolutely can. Uh, professional chefs, they're not, they're not wizards or scientists or anything like that. What they do, you can do at home easily. Um, but total cost of this dish was no more than 20 bucks and this right here will feed 15, 20 people easily. So, but if you were just doing it for a little side dish, those little two ears of corn, it'll cost you no more than $5. All right, sir. So we're going to go ahead and use these spoons to serve these people. Let's just make sure that's nice and tossed. I don't think I'm trying to um, convert them. I think I'm just trying to help a newer generation realize that there's uh, healthier, better options in everything uh, other than just uh, being complacent and, and uh, abiding to convenience. I would tell just to continue with his passion for, for the culinary world and uh, to be patient. Things don't happen overnight. You never know, he might be able to just stay here in El Paso and, and create something great. And I wish him the, the best of luck and uh, he just needs to be patient. Um, I am a chef as well, a pastry chef. It takes time, I know it's going to take time. Um, helping him a little bit on uh, how to, to do more healthier um, desserts. So. We're working on that, both of us. Food brings all aspects of life and people together in all languages. It's just not a substance that nourishes our body, but a chance to learn about somebody, to, to visit somebody, to be with somebody, to talk with somebody, to make love with somebody. Just to be around somebody.
Those are the best meals that I've ever cooked in my life is when I'm cooking for friends and family and you're just having a good time doing it and it's, a, it's more of an event versus the chore. And uh, to me, that's, that's my favorite part about cooking is when you're able to put smiles on people's faces and, and create those little memories because um, that's, that's important, man, memories because without it, you have no legacy.